Today's Sunday School lesson. The lesson is entitled, The Passover with the Disciples. Our text is Matthew 26, verses 17 through 30. Amen. When we think about the Passover, amen, I, I immediately think about warfare. I think about the Lord going to the most extreme measures to save his sons. Hallelujah. And on that note, let, let me make this uh, aside, give you this aside. I read something the other day where there was a church that uh, was offering seminary uh, on, on online services. And uh, one of the prerequisites was that if you were going to their seminary to join the ministry, then you could not have been under a woman's leadership. And I was baffled that anybody who taught the word didn't know the word. Because there's no gender in the Holy Ghost. And it is not the sex of a man that teaches, neither is it the sex of a woman. We know this because the Lord... Uh, had a conversation with someone who asked him that uh, his brother married a woman and he died. And uh, when he died, the brother took her. He didn't raise up seed, so the other brother took her. He didn't raise up seed, so the last brother took her. Whose wife would she be? And the Lord said that they were in error because in the Lord, in the spirit, there is no marriage. And there is no marriage because there is no need for procreation. Our sexuality is for procreation. And on that note, amen, I, I just want to clarify that because there may be some woman out there that does not perceive herself to be a son of God. The entire Bible is written to the sons of God. We are the sons of God. Hallelujah. We are daughters in the flesh, but we're sons in the spirit. The scripture says in John 1 and 12, as many as received him, gave him power to become his son. Would you have the audacity to say that God is a respect of person? That he would not give his spirit to his daughters? I believe the Lord cleared that up in Acts 2 and 17. Hallelujah. And the scripture reminds us that on the last days, the Lord is going to pour out of his spirit on all flesh. Amen. I just thought I'd clear that up for you because being a woman in this life, we have been uh, uh, objectified. We have been used and you know, by the, the, the slight and the cunning craftiness of men for sex and for other things that have nothing to do with the Spirit of God. How do I know? Because the Bible says in Galatians 4 and 4, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, his son, born of a woman. Jesus was born of a woman. It was a woman that brought in your salvation. It was a woman at the tomb that brought the first message of the coming of the Lord. I'm going to get off of that for a little while. I get a little excited. Let's go back. I just thought I'd clear that up. Because, saints of God, 
This Passover, this Passover, hallelujah, is for whomsoever will. So the scripture says in Matthew 26, 17, Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where would thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, the master saith, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thine house with my disciples. The Passover was an institution after the children had come, amen. Into, they were in bondage in, in Egypt. And the Lord uh, uh, had Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my sons go. And the Lord went to the extent to say, you, you let my sons go, I will kill your son. To prevent Israel from dying, blood was placed on the lintel. And the death angel went through the camp. And the death angel, as it is today, is destroying everything that is not, amen, bound to Christ. Because Christ is our life. Here we find, amen, that they are, they have instituted it, amen, and made it a, a ritual that they uh, commemorate this time. Remember this time. Jesus, too, born under the law. Don't you forget that. Jesus, amen, brought in liberty. He could not have, have been born in liberty and brought liberty in as well. He was brought in in flesh to be a curse to, to die on a tree. So Jesus said, amen, go and tell this man that I'm going to have the Passover at his house, me and my disciples. Jesus didn't say, go and ask this man, can I use his facilities? I'm making mention of that because when each person went to go do what Jesus told them to do. Nothing stood in their way. It doesn't matter who owns what, baby. If God told you to do it, then you do it. You see, because God is omnipotent. God is not going to tell you to do something, amen, in, that has something to do with someone else, and he hasn't prepared the other person's heart. This man didn't offer an argument about, no, I'm not going to do it, you know, like Nabal did. When David came to him and asked him to feed his, 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 uh, his people, this man was under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Who was going to refuse God? The disciple told the man, the master said it. Next time you want something, amen, then you've prayed and you know that it is covered through the promises of God. I mean, why don't you use that phrase? The master said it. The master said it's mine. The master said I can have it. The master said, give it to me. The master said, manifest. The master said, devil, I bind you. The master said it. Nothing shall resist what the master says. Amen. Scripture tells us in Hebrews 1 and 3 that the whole world, amen, is upheld by the word of God. Whatever you're going through, whatever you need, whatever it is, learn the word of God. And stop, amen, standing in your own physical might. Standing in your own intellectual progress. Stand in the life of Jesus, which is his word, that you will pass through the fire. Because it's not his life if it hasn't passed through the fire. By that I mean, don't be a coward. Stand up against the opposition and fight for what God said you can have. Let me hurry on. Praise his name. The scripture says, amen. Verse 19. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them. And they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. 
This is the omniscience of Jesus. Jesus didn't change what was going to happen simply because he knew what was going to happen. Amen. He makes mention of what he knows because the disciples need to believe that they are the elect of God. They need to believe, amen, that God knows all things before they happen. And let me tell you something. Just because God did not change what was supposed to happen, amen, doesn't mean he couldn't. The fact that he made mention was so that the disciples, amen, could stand on the word that Isaiah brought. That they could believe what Jeremiah said. That they can believe what Habakkuk and, and Zechariah said. This was supposed to happen. He was supposed to be betrayed. I don't know about you, but that, that word betrayal is devastating. I think being betrayed is, is, is worse than being shot. Being betrayed is... It's worse than being stabbed. Because betrayal, amen, hurts your innermost being. It begins to make you question, amen, that did I, did I uh, uh, not understand it? Why did I not see this coming? Why did I know this? You know, when you've given so much to someone, when you've heard someone pledge their love, and amen, and especially when you've been with someone for years, and you've been good to them, and you are betrayed, that is the most hurting thing in life, amen? But I believe, it's just what I believe, I believe that God allows betrayal in, for, to the individual who has misplaced affection. I'm not saying, amen, that every betrayal is this. But I'm saying sometimes, amen, you can be in a soul tie. Sometimes you don't know it, but you may love an individual more than you love God. And God have to sever that relationship. Because whether or not you've been uh, uh, betrayed by a good friend or someone you love or a spouse, it doesn't matter. You're still going to have to forgive. But you'll come back from that experience, amen, in the right place with God. See, your heart was not ordained to keep people in it. David said, I hear the word in my heart. The word is the thing, the, the source of our uh uh, lo our love and it draws the parameters for our lives but sometimes we don't care we love who we love until we are betrayed can you imagine the 12 amen sitting at the table with the savior and him saying that someone would betray him I would imagine amen that there were 11 broken hearts sitting at that table. You know, because when people, amen, give us and they, and they sacrifice for us and they teach us and, amen, deliver us and impart to us, amen, we have a sacred honor. We have a sacred honor for those individuals. And to think that someone would betray them. Then when you betrayed Jesus, you betrayed me. When you betrayed my pastor, you betrayed me. Because that's what love do. Amen. Let me hurry up. The scripture says in verse 22. And when they were exceeding sorrowful. That's that brokenness. Amen. And began every one of them to say unto him. Lord is it I. In actuality what they were saying is. You know my heart. I don't even know my own heart. I don't even know if I'm capable of that. I don't, Lord, would I do that? Is it I? Is it me? Omniscient God? Is it me? 
You know, there's so many things about ourselves we don't know. We don't know what, what decisions we're going to make in life. We don't know what falls we're going to take. We don't know what trial is up ahead. We don't know. And because we don't know, we suspend condemning and judging others. We need to stop that. We need to stop judging people, amen, in their trial. We need to learn to pray. Because the disciples did not even know what they were capable of. You don't know what you're capable of. You let the right trial come. You might surprise yourself. Um, I, I, I have a burden this morning. Because the church has had it so easy for so long. That we have, we, we've drifted away from loving one another. We, we've drifted away from believing our things, hoping our things, enduring our things. We will do that for ourselves. But the Lord said, if you love me, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen? The only way we could do that, amen, you can give me that, please. The only, only way we could do that. Hallelujah. It's to know how frail we are. David said, Lord, teach us to number our days. Teach me to know how frail I am. And if I understand my own frailty, maybe I'll be a little bit more compassionate toward others. Amen. The disciples will come just sorrowful. Amen. Wondering if it was them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The scripture goes on to say, verse 23. I'm in Matthew 26, verse 23. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. And the Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Oh my God. You know when you take people in your home. And they betray you. When they sit at your table. And they eat with you. With secret hate. Secret jealousy. When they try to lay hands on you. And pray for you. And they haven't worked out all their issues. And amen. And, and, and you know, amen, in your heart that you've been honest and you've been fair. Don't worry about it. Don't wonder uh, a second guess, Jesus. Jesus know how to perfect all the things that concern you. Amen. We never discussed. Did this break Jesus' heart? Did, you know, knowing that somebody is going to hurt you doesn't stop you from being hurt. Knowing that it is ordained for you to go through a trial doesn't prevent you from being broken. We stand up every day against the enemy. We stand up Amen. No matter what state we are in. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you today, amen, just as Jesus sat and ate with the one that betrayed him, he also worked miracles with the one that betrayed him. He also ministered to the one that betrayed him. But you and I need to let God's perfect will be done in our lives without vindictiveness and without retaliation and without revenge. Be still, the Lord said, and know that I am God. Train yourself to be still. Suspend your opinion 
Ask the Lord as in Psalms 141 and 3 say, set a watch over my mouth and keep the doors of my lips, especially when I'm going through. Because there are powers in the air, principalities, demonic spirit, spiritual wickedness in high places. And we tend to say foolish things when we're most vulnerable. Sit and know that whatever transpired in your life, if God, and I know he does, as in Jeremiah 29 and 11, has an expected end, then he has an ordained path. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Lord has an expected end. He has a, a place for you to show up in a time appointed within a particular habitation, a particular boundary. In order for the Lord's expectation to manifest, he has to have charted your course. Keep me, Lord, in the course that you have ordained for me. Would you like to ask him to do that? Give me strength to endure the course, the path of life that you have ordained for me. Because there are, there are hills and mountains and, and valleys in this path. But the Lord said, fear no evil, for he's with us. Hallelujah. In this time, our Savior has experienced so much suffering that he didn't mention. We know he has because he is both human and divine, as are we, human and divine. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me get back to my lesson. We give our God the glory today. Thank you, Jesus. Let me read on. The scripture says, amen, it had been better if Judas had not been born. In other words, Judas is not going to be able to endure without severity of uh, hurt what he is going to have to pay for what he has done. Everybody has to pay for what we have done. Jesus put it this way. He says, your sins shall find you out. The only thing that will stop the consequences and the, the penalty of sin is grace. For the scriptures say, where sin did abound, grace did that much more abound. I know you're thinking about some things you've done in your life, and you're saying in your heart, oh Lord, Oh, Lord, I did that in my ignorance. Oh, Lord, I did that in my bondage. Oh, Lord, I did that in my foolishness. Stay on the path, baby. God will wash the memory of what you have done. But don't, don't, don't try to uh, gamble with God. Don't try to stay in the church, in, in the faith, and in the world. For when you willfully sin, he said, there is no sacrifice. Amen. The scripture goes on to say, amen. Verse 25. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast sinned. Boy, would I love a couple of hours to talk to you about Judas. Asking the question, is it I? Was he saying he didn't know? Was he being manipulative? Was he naive enough to think that he could he could play on Jesus? What what's going on? We need to talk about that in a in a letter letter day we will. But I want to ask you today: Is it you? Are you betraying Jesus? 
You betray Jesus when you hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. You betray Jesus when you give yourself certain perks and certain amenities that God didn't give you, and then you back it up with, Lord, forgive me. You betray Jesus when you allow yourself to uh, uh, act out of anger, act out of animosity, act out of anything that's contrary to the knowledge that you have. It is betrayal. It's betrayal. Hallelujah. For the Lord is the word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 26 says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed it. And he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. At this particular time, amen, God was um, changing, transferring the natural Passover into the spirit Passover. The children of Israel physically set at the Passover. They physically <coughs> ate together as death passed. But Jesus is saying this supper, this is the, uh, the catalyst. This is the thing I want you to remember because your life will never be the same. I'm going to take what you did physically and I'm going to show you its true meaning. Hallelujah. The scripture says in Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that through the knowledge of scripture we may have hope. Those things that they were doing in the natural, amen, they were giving us a shadow of what was to come. Now Jesus is sitting at the table with the disciples and he said, amen, this is my body now. This is, this is my body. This is the body of God. Amen. Verse 27 says, And he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye. All of it. Drink all of it. Drink all of it. Drink all of it. You know, we fully understood what Jesus was saying. I mean, we'd be seeking God for every waking moment to take the word and, and find us a place to go and meditate and learn and, and amen. Let the word transfuse into us. He said, get all of it. Take it all. Amen. Listen to what he says. He said, why? Why, why do we take it all? He says in verse 28, For this is my, my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He said, But I will say unto you, I will not drink his forth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. He said, when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So in our lesson today, praise God, the Lord is changing Israel. Israel was a religious group of people with many uh, rites and many uh, physical services. Amen. Amen. And it was these, when I, when I say that, I mean the offering of goats and the offering of bulls. And, you know, they had physical, tangible things that, amen, represented their uh, 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 tie with God. Amen. This is why it was so necessary for uh, Ezra to get the children back to restore the house in our previous Sunday school lessons. But Jesus is, is changing things now. He said, amen, in Jeremiah 33 and 31, amen, no longer will I take you by the hand, but I will put my spirit in your inward part. This is Jesus, amen, putting his spirit in our inward part. This is the thing 
thing that causes us, amen, never to be alone. This is the evidence of Jesus saying, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Because I'm no longer on the altar with the blood of goats and bulls. Amen. This is my blood. Do you realize what's in blood? Life. Jesus' life is in his blood. And his blood is shed. And it was dispersed. And it is given to us as word by faith. Hallelujah. So no longer, amen, am I operating by my own mind. I've been given the mind of Christ. And let me say this as we prepare to close. One thing that this Passover gives us as well, amen, it not only gives us the mind of Christ, but it gives us the divine nature of Christ. Amen. That's what the scripture says, that he's given us exceeding great promises by partaking of these promises, amen. We escape corruption and we put on the divine nature. You have the divine nature. You have the divine nature. Don't let it lie dormant. Don't let all that you have gone through to be what God has called you to be. All the things you suffered through. All the things you have endured and gave up. Don't let it be in vain. What is the beauty of that nature? The beauty of that nature is this. No devil can stand against it. The beauty of that nature is this. You enter a rest. No longer do you worry about what you think you don't have. No longer are you uh, suffering anxiety and being overwhelmed because you think uh, things are not going to work out for you. Because of our precious Passover. The scripture says, amen, in Psalms 84 and 11, he will withhold no good thing from you. Trust him. Trust our Passover. Trust our Redeemer. We have been redeemed. And if you would receive that today, amen, stop making battles for yourself, amen. When, when, when the enemy comes in and you allow him to antagonize you and to wrestle with your mind, it's because you won't let that nature of Christ rise up. Put the devil in his place and walk on in Jesus' name. That's the beauty of our redemption. Our redemption came with a package. We have, amen, received an inheritance by this redemption. Hallelujah. We have received an inheritance that's not ordained for heaven. There's no warfare in heaven. Everything that Jesus has given, he's given you for this life. Learn to access the blood. We bring you greetings. I'm Dr. Anthony Washington.
razors I should not wear When I get knocked out I get right back up again Gonna make it happen, it's my destiny